Welcome to part 2.5. I didn't think I'd say that, but uh, the diorama is taking a little bit longer than I anticipated, plus I've had stuff to deal with. So I am going to finish what I started in part two, and uh, hopefully it will be ready for paint at the end of this session. <music> Ah, you know, it's just the way it goes sometimes. You just can't plan for stuff, but you just have to be flexible enough to deal with it all. Okay, so what I'm going to do in this one, I am going to finish cladding the rest of the diorama. We're going to do the top section. We're going to cut the detail part, like the mosaic style floor on the back side of the um, building. Uh, and then we're going to glue the building on top. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. Um, I'm going to speed a lot of this up because I'm aware that the last few videos were an hour long. So I'm pretty much doing exactly what I was doing in the previous video. And that's just kind of orientating my steps. So I've got the face and then the top of it. Um, when I get to this point, drilling the holes, I'll stop. Um, and then we'll go from there. So um, good luck to me. All right, we arrived at this point a little bit quicker than I thought, which is great. One thing I am going to do, I am going to give this a couple of hours to dry before I start sanding it back. I got a bit keen in the previous video and I had stuff sliding off and we don't want that. But what I do need to do to get this final bit in place is I need to just kind of trace through the holes about where the, uh, the screws are going through. Now these don't have to be precise because the building will cover a lot of the um, mistakes if I make any, but also um, we can use the gravel and the stone chips and the slate and everything else later to cover up any unsightly messes. So that is not a problem. And if you can see on the top down, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to very roughly mark out these holes on here. So they kind of, they kind of bisect half of the, half of the piece. Um, and this one is completely obscured, so I need to just put a quick line there. So it's about there. So very rough, but we can refine them later. And what I'll probably do is I'll cut the majority of the material away now, uh, and then uh, when it's glued down and dried, I can then just fettle the holes and just flog them out a little bit so I can so it allow the um, the diorama to fit on top. So I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Uh, yes. And then what I'll do is I'll also transfer them onto this side um, after I've cut my design into this because I don't want the machine to, uh, to get interfered with with those holes. So it's really important that we do that. After, I'm sure it'll be fine, but I'm just trying to be cautious because uh, I do not want to break um, uh, a drill bit on my CNC because they are quite expensive. So uh, I'm going to flog these holes out and then we'll uh, glue it down. Now, if you've got a Dremel uh, or a drill, you can use that as well. But uh, as I said, these are just super rough. Um, so I'm not too worried about it if they're not perfectly spherical or circular rather. It doesn't really matter. They're just very rough. We're just trying to open up the hole so we can uh, so we can pass the screws through from the bottom of the uh, of the building. But as I said, we'll refine these a little bit later. <sighs> All right, and there it is. So really happy with how that's gone on. You can see I just cut out that little hole there. You can see on the top down that I've just done that little hole. So that's perfect. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to offer this up, which is nice. Yeah, and I'm really happy with how that looks. So again, I will uh, sort the holes for the locations out later. Um, so what I might do is I might grab the building and just offer it up and have a look, see how it goes.
Now, obviously, I can't pass the uh, the building through those holes because they're not quite right. But you can see that it's really starting to take shape now. And already, because of those joins, you can almost see where the where the lines are for the so for the final effect when I start to score all the lines in. So. It does look quite cool. It's definitely a long way of going about it. You know, it's quite a big model. This styrene's quite difficult to cut. Um, you know, and you could, like I said in a previous video, you could have used Foamex when it would be a lot easier to score and you just have to cut them to the right size and that's it, pretty much score it, paint it, done. Um, you know, this way is kind of, I guess, a bit more traditional in the style of, it, of the build. Um, but uh, I'm really pleased with its progress. I'm looking forward to getting the sandpaper on there because these just look rough as a badger's ass. Um, so I really want to get them tidied up, but uh, I've got to be patient, wait for the glue to dry, uh, and then we'll come back and uh, take care of everything else. It's been 24 hours, uh, and that glue has set really well. So really happy. Um, now, you obviously know what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna sand the fronts off uh, and just get it all nice, and then I'm obviously gonna chop the sides. So uh, I'm not gonna labor this too much because you've seen me build this section. It is identical to this, just lots of sanding, lots of refining, uh, and we'll just get it as nice and smooth as we've got the, uh, the previous layer. So I'll crack on with that, and I'll come back to you when I'm done. I'm really happy that uh, the glue has done a fantastic job and really adhered those uh, those sheets of styrene to the MDF and it is absolutely rock solid. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, so next we're gonna talk about this corner section at the top here. I did make a massive mistake here. What I should have done is I should have got a square piece, just like that I guess, and then machined the design onto the front of it rather than try and do it at an angle. So, oh, what a problem. But it's okay, I've managed to sort it. So you remember I obviously cut this to that, you can see on the top down there, I cut that to the right size, but lining up this edge here of the um, of the of the decorative tiles, I guess um, I just couldn't quite get it right on my CNC machine. So if I'd cut it like uh, you know all square, I could have then orientated it to the bit I wanted and then cut it out, and it would have been a million times easier. But I didn't do that because I obviously pre-cut that first. And if we remember, this was the last sheet of MDF, uh, it's MDF of styrene that I had. So not the best, but we can fix it, it's okay. So uh, I'll get a photo of this, but you can see from the photo that the um, I didn't manage to get the line quite right. Um, but it doesn't matter because most of it will be covered up by the building. So what's more important for me is that the angle that the tiles are running at runs at the same angle as the diorama. Because first of all, when I first did it, I just thought, oh, the lines will just go straight across. And then I looked at it and that's not right. They've got to follow the same direction. So a little bit of trial and error, but we've got it in the end. Now I've already marked a line. Hopefully you can see that. I'll get a photo of that as well. A line of where the, the this sheet needs to sit on here. So it is slightly back, but what that does is it now aligns 
the direction of the tiles to the um, to the piece. Another word on this on these tiles. Now you obviously can buy pre scored or whatever, however terminology you want to call it. You can get pre cut um, different types of squares from um, uh, from any hobby shop. They do it in loads of different sizes and shapes and all sorts. And when I was laying in bed a couple of weeks ago thinking about this diorama, I thought, oh, I'll put a really cool design. I'll do like, you know, like a, a border and then I'll do like a circular um, uh, mosaic and all this lot. And then when it actually came to it, I was like, oh, that's a bit too much work. I can't quite manage that. So again, you know, all down to that planning, my aspirations far outstripped my ability. <laughs> so I had to pay that back quite a bit. And I've just gone for a standard tile. And if I'm honest with you, even that took two hours to get that right in the, in the program. And it sounds mental, but hey, that's what happened. So it's fine. So I did, env I did envisage being a lot more uh, complicated, but I think we'll leave that for later versions. Um, plus, I'm under the cosh massively with this one, so I know it's late, so I'm trying to get this out for you guys. So I've gone with tiles because, you know, it works quite well. If I want to do a different colour when I paint it later, I might do that, I might just do it grey, I haven't quite decided. Anyway, so uh, I've, made my, I've made my line, so we start off in this corner here, because we know that that's right, and then we'll just pop it out till it hits our line, and that is the angle that follows the diorama. I've already pre-done that off. But all I did was I offered a ruler up against here, against that leading edge, and then measured it and used the other side of the ruler to line it up with the tiles going in that direction. So it's half there. Now I did mention there is a gap, of course. You can see that on the top down. But when we add our building, it covers up the line completely. The only gap you now see is what's left in the doorway but that's okay because we can just fill that with some rubble and some uh, some debris because obviously we've got half a building. So something would have fallen down here and we can cover that up beautifully. So I'm not worried about it. Um, I am not gonna cut the holes in just yet. I'd rather glue it down, let it, um, let it bond and then I will then cut the holes out and then we'll go for a process of just test fitting or dry fitting the building in here uh, and then again, we'll trim up the backside because there's a bit of a lip here now because obviously we've had to pull it back to get the alignment of the tiles. Uh, and then we'll be ready for sticking this sucker down and then we can start adding some rocks and rubble and start getting on with our debris. That has been uh, drying now for about two hours and uh, it's pretty solid. Now, if we remember I said about that I, um, I cut this at the wrong angle, which means there's a huge lip now, which I should be able to show you, uh, just here, a huge lip that needs cutting off. Now, what I could do is I could just get my knife or some clippers, whatever, and just clip it along. But I really wanna try and preserve uh, a really nice edge along there. I don't have to do too much sanding. So uh, I'm gonna use my Dremel because for me, it's just the easiest way to do it. And uh, I wanna try and make my life a little bit easier if I can. So first things first, it might seem a little bit convoluted to do it this way, but I wanna put a straight edge along here and then uh, use my Dremel to just cut the line. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going off the, the back side here, you can probably see on the top down camera here, uh, and then we'll draw a line uh, roughly where I think it is, and then we'll just cut along there quite happy with where that is. I have got some clamps here, and I know it seems real overkill, but you know, you could use this if you've got like a, a really long edge to cut on a different type of model, you know, and uh, you know, if you've got like um, 
a table saw, you could have just, I could have just ran this along the edge, but I don't. So this is the best way. And I just want it to be a nice cut. I don't want it to be really janky. That's not to say that I can't achieve a good result. I'm gonna achieve a good result with my Dremel, but uh, we'll give it a try. Okay, so I'm just loading up the, the Dremel and I've got one of these, uh, it's a cutting wheel, I think it's a, I don't know what it is. It's just a cutting wheel, <laughs> came with the set. I do have the flexible hose, but, um, or the flexible cord, whatever it is, with the little drill on the end, but I just thought I'll use this. So I've got a massive extension lead. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it real slow. I'm gonna have to stand up for this because uh, there's not a lot of room here. And obviously I don't wanna cut, I don't wanna touch this against the metal ruler because it'll spark. So I'm just gonna be really steady and cut off the majority of the excess. Great, well that worked really well. Ugh, made a right mess, but anyway. Um, it's obviously melted the plastic a little bit, but I did stay away from the edge and that dries really quickly. And then uh, I'll be able to scrape it away like I have done in the past. So um, I'll get on with that and then I'll come back to you with it nice and flat. Yes, that is lovely. Way better than I imagined it would be. So, uh, so that's really pleasing. I uh, had a tiny little bit of lift uh, on this end, but that's okay. We're just gonna pop a bit of PVA glue in there a little bit later uh, and it will be absolutely fine. But that is smooth as, it's fantastic. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna flog out these holes to accept the building. Uh, and I'm just gonna use uh, this countersink bit on, uh, on the end of this drill here. So again, we can be quite generous because we know where these screw holes are located, they're right in the middle of those columns and this diameter is less than the column. So we know we can be quite generous. We just wanna be really gentle. Oh yes. Lovely. Great, that looks real good. Just gonna clean it out. Right, well, it's the moment I've been waiting for. A little bit of pressure required. Oh, look at that. That is lovely. Okay, well, it locates really nicely. Uh, just having a quick look at it from the front here. Very pleased. And there is, unfortunately, a bit more of a bigger gap right at this side. So. You might be able to see that on the top down just there. But really pleased with that. And like I said, we're gonna add a load of, we're gonna add a load of um, gravel and damage uh, and stone chips all on the bottom here. Uh, so we'll cover up all of our dodgy mistakes. So uh, it's a very forgiving thing. Uh, so the next thing for me to do now is I'm gonna mix up a load of two part epoxy. Um, and then I shall secure this in place because there's nothing else I need to do now to the base. Um, and then I'll, I'll give it sort of an hour to dry. It only needs 10 minutes, but I'll glue this corner and then just give it an hour to dry and then it'll be beautifully uh, solid at the end of it. So I'm just checking the alignment of that. It feels off to me, but it's not. Once it's in place, it's good. All right, let's get some epoxy. I've got a nice bit of MDF here to mix my epoxy on. Uh, and I'm gonna use the back of a um, paintbrush just to mix it all together. And I've got some baby wipes on hand because if this stuff gets in your skin, it's pretty nasty to get off, but also to wipe the back of my, uh, or to wipe the um, uh, paintbrush off because uh, I don't want 
massive bits of epoxy on there. So this is just um, Araldite five minute epoxy adhesive. I brought it at um, Bunnings, but you know, you can obviously buy it pretty much from any hardware store or an equivalent uh, epoxy. You know, whatever you use, you might have a particular favorite. I'll just give it a nice mix. Very good. I'm just gonna wallop a bit in the hole. Again, I'm trying to I'm trying to be careful, but if it does slip onto the model, I'm not too bothered because again, the uh, uh, the bottom of the, the the base of the model is all going to be covered up in gravel and all sorts of bits and bobs. So not too bad. So that's quite nice. I am going to put a remainder or a little bead all along the base of this model just to help it adhere. I've actually mixed up the right amount for once. Usually I mix up too much or too little and it's a massive pain. Great, just put a little bit on those screw heads. Look at that, that is lovely. Push that to one side. If you can see that on the top down, hopefully I'm just gonna pop it into place. You can already feel the uh, epoxy grab it, which is a really nice reassuring feeling. Just check my alignment. Not too bad. I do want it sat upright. What you could do, you could use like um, some Lego or something uh, and make a bit of a big chunk of it and then you could put that against here and use that as like um, as the level. Make sure I didn't put the other end in my mouth. But I can check that here, there we go. Quite happy. This end just concerns me a little bit. It's the, the pins are fighting against the uh, where I want it to be. So I might try and grab my clamp, if I can, and just clamp that into position just until it cures, which that has done really nicely. And we'll offer this up again. Make sure that is a right angle, which it is. Yeah. It's pretty good. Then we'll just use our wet wipe just to save my uh, paintbrush. Yep, I could already feel that that's, that started to harden quite quickly, but as I say, I am gonna give it an hour before I start moving it around and knocking it again. The next thing I'm gonna do, which you could argue I could have done it before I stuck this down, but uh, uh, I've got these uh, evergreen half round number 242 uh, and they're two mil half round sections you can hopefully see from that little diagram there um, and these are going to be the front detail of the steps so I don't want to move this around too much if I rotate it there I'm going to put a strip of this uh, on the steps on the front of the step of each one uh, just to add a little bit of extra detail. Um, the frustrating part about this, unfortunately, is that uh, if I offer it up against my step, it's about 10 mil short, which is a real pain. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these lengths to the length of uh, one of these sections and then make it the same length of this one here. So you can see on the top down, so you've got that really lovely long one there and then this shorter one. And then I'm gonna alternate uh, here. Uh, and then have the cut section there, just to kind of get that pattern, make it a bit a little less regular. Excuse me. Um, yeah, just letting that cure, and then uh, you know we'll have a final sand. Then we'll apply this with plastic cement, um, and then we can start scoring uh, the lines and then putting the damage on. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's been about an hour since I left uh, the epoxy to dry. So we'll take my clamp off because that building is solid, it's not going anywhere. So brilliant. I remember we clamped up this side, if you remember, uh, and it has stayed in position. And if I have a look down it, it's pretty much there. So that is great news. Now also off camera, whilst I was waiting for this to dry, I just cut all of these lengths here, these half rounds um, uh, to length really. So um, you remember me saying that uh, I was gonna cut them to the length of the longer bit and then I was gonna alternate them like I did the short and the long. So um, I've cut all these to length now. I think there was one left to cut, which I'll, I'll do for you right now. I'm sure I don't need to show you how to cut this stuff, but I thought it might be worth just uh, showing you the full process. That's what the whole video is all about. So I need to make sure that I've got everything I need because I'm uh, quite unorganized as I've talked about before. So sometimes it's good just to go back and check you've got everything. A couple have fallen on the floor. Yeah, there was one more to cut. So I'll use this as a template and uh, it cuts really beautifully. So hopefully you can see that on the top down there. It's a little bit easier for you to see that. Just draw them together and you can get a scalpel or a blade, whatever you want to do, and then just chop it like that. So that's good. So that will do all of the fronts now of those stairs. Obviously we need to cut enough to do the last part. So I'll just measure this up bespokely because uh, it's a lot easier. So we've just offered it up just there. I might use some clippers for this. Uh, no, because it won't give me a nice cut. Well, I'll do it for the first one. Yeah, it's a real rough cut and then we'll just smooth it out. There we go. If I just chop this end piece off nice and... There we go. And then I'll just cut a load of these. I think I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight more, because I've already got one. There we go, that's everything cut. So, you know, Building in this traditional style, everything just takes so much longer, you know, but hey, I guess maybe, you know, if you've got like a, a 3D printer or an FDM or something, you might be able to just build this entirely if you've got a big enough one and just print the whole thing. You just need to go back and just sand the whole thing back and, and that'd be that. Anyway, I like building like this. It's good fun. Um, I haven't put the edge on here because this is technically the, the street, you know, the pavement, I guess, the road and the other side of the pavement. So I haven't put any of these detail on here because it doesn't really make sense. Um, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, Tamiya Extra Thin uh, uh, plastic cement and I'm going to put a tiny dab on this end um, and that will get my height and then I'll just do it in stages because uh, to glue that in one big long jump will, uh, will take a time. I'm also going to get a couple of bits of Lego uh, and they will kind of act as like um, uh, a point so I can get it completely level because I don't want this to be kind of a bit janky all over the front of it. So uh, I'm going to use a bit of Lego just to help smooth it out as much as possible. So that's a really boring job. It will probably take, I don't know, about half hour, 40 minutes maybe to get that all done, but uh, I'll come back to you with it all stuck together.
And there we have it. All done. The bevel, I think that's what it's called, is on all of the fronts of those. And it is really nice. Really nice. Really helps. I was lucky I had just about the right amount. So obviously what I've got to do is obviously cut all these little edges off. Um, and then I'm just going to drag my blade across like you saw me do earlier, and then I'm going to sand it flat. But before I do all of that, um, I'm just going to give it an hour or so just to set, uh, and then I'll come back and sand it. This trim at the end is proving quite difficult to cut with a scalpel, actually. Every time I try to put pressure on it, it pulls away from the front of the model, which is not good, really. Um, so I'm going to have to just sand it back and then just pop a little bit of glue on top just to help uh, hold it in place. Okay, with that done, I'm really happy with the uh, with the step, uh, the, its smoothness. Uh, there's a few gaps and stuff, but you know we can fill that a little bit later on with all the rocks and the rubble and stuff. The next thing to do now really is to uh, is to get a handle on the the width of these steps that I want them. So I kind of want them to kind of alternate like in traditional sort of brick housing, uh, and ideally, I'd love to use my Lego blocks here for the for the measurement and I'm quite lucky that you know two two by fours is virtually not quite but virtually the width of each block but we're lucky because um, you can probably see on the top down there that's lined up on that there the edge of it actually just goes over the edge of the line so that means that we can use this as our marker now uh, and then we can move that on to the next point, draw a line, move along to the next bit, and move along, and keep doing that for the whole model, and then that will give me a really good line where to score, and also I'll be able to use this to, to score the line with as well, with a bit of Lego can't beat Lego, it's amazing. So I'm gonna go and just score all of the rest of the lines and we'll come back with some pen marks. And finally, just to complete the, um, the gaps on the pavement, I'm gonna go with a slightly different uh, width than the rest of it. I'm going for a six wide. I just needed a little bit more Lego to complete my form. You know, you can measure it out if you've got no Lego, although I can't imagine not many people don't have Lego at home. I don't know, maybe if you've got kids or, you know, lots of adults have Lego. I mean, Lego is massive, right? But you could also, do, you know, you could do a bit of card and you can make a template out of card. You can obviously use a ruler and measure it and, get, you know, there's so many options. Uh, and we're obviously going to use our existing line here that we had previously. So I'm just going to double check. So that is one whole piece there, which is fine. Um, and if I get it on the top down, you'll be able to see I'm just lining that up beautifully. There we go, and just to complete the uh, the line here, just gonna make another little form out of the Lego, just to help me out. Great. And I'm just gonna mark the front as well. With the Lego block. Now, one thing we do need to do as well is we need to transfer this line and this line here onto this piece over here. So I'm just going to use this random piece of wood that isn't fully square. Oh, it's not too bad, it's alright. And we're just going to draw that line so it's in line. Now you could argue that it, you know, 
they might not have matched the uh, the pavement or sidewalk up on the other side of the road. But I think for me, I might just do it. Or I could have just put one in the middle, but I've matched it up because I think it'll look all right. Uh, and again, I'll just do that little line at the front. Just like that, lovely job. Starting to really take shape now. Now we move on to the scoring. Uh, in an ideal world, I'd like a dart or uh, some sort of similar kind of uh, point, but I don't really have anything like that here. All I've got is this blade. Now, it's not ideal because when you drag it through, it, the blade isn't exactly at a point, it's kind of off to one side. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to drag it through twice, once one side, and then switch it over and drag it through the other side. And that should give me a nice sort of V shape that I'm after. So um, I'm gonna use this uh, Lego ruler, I guess, however you wanna phrase it. And then if you can see on the top down there, it's not massively clear. You, uh, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop it on there and then just drag the blade across a couple of times. Now I, I was gonna do this freehand, but I, I had a practice and uh, it, it, it tears out real bad and you end up with some crazy marks. So um, I'm gonna reinforce it there like that. So each one will probably require, I don't know, maybe 10 scores perhaps, just to get a nice groove. And then I'll do a couple of passes right at the end because obviously I won't be as straight as the using the, the Lego ruler and that'll just perhaps give it a little bit of individuality there, which will be quite nice as well. So it's made kind of a nice divot and when we put oil on there, uh, later for when we come to paint it, that will give us a really nice dark shade in there as well. So I'm just going to carry on, do the entire board on the tops, and then we'll come and look at the uh, faces. That was boring. <laughs> okay, didn't take that long actually. However, I have just scored from this side. So now I'm gonna have to go back and score from the other side because at the moment my groove looks like it goes straight down and then it goes out that side. So now I've got to come from the other side with this blade and get that other V. So as I said earlier, if I had something like a dart or something to a point, you could literally just pop it in and drag it and then it would score a perfect V. So unfortunately, as I said, I don't have anything like that. So I'm just gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna do it manually this time now. I'm not gonna use the, um, I'm not gonna use the little ruler there. Uh, and as I said, that'll kind of create a little bit of uh, uniqueness, I guess, to each step, which is what we're after because obviously my pull won't be as beautifully as straight as using the, the Lego ruler there. Now that that's done, we need to address the faces of the um, of the steps here, so the rounded edge that we added. Now it's a bit tricky to get to get that in there, but what I've come up with, I've got like a mini hacksaw played, like a junior hacksaw, and I've cut the end off it because if you can see here, it's very smooth at the at the front part, and we need to get right up against the edge. We've not got a loom, not got a lot of room for sawing, so I've just snapped it off the end using the. The, the snips there. And what I'm gonna do is firstly, I'm gonna start at the top uh, of, the, uh, of the step, just to kind of get a groove going on the, um, on the uh, semicircular bead there, and the half circle rather. Uh, and also what I'll do is that'll help reinforce the gap between the, um, 
uh, the steps. And then I'm going to get in real close and just go up and down ever so gently and just put a bit of a bit of a saw in it. And if I can, I want to try and go through uh, the entire bit of plastic card there, the two mil plastic card. Well, not all the time. I will do it sporadically because I, you know when stuff when concrete is joined together and like top of the paving slabs and stuff like that, generally they get torn out. So, so instead of being perfectly flat like that, they, they start to get torn out there like the top of my fingers there. So they're not perfectly square against each other because obviously the concrete goes in the middle. So it would just be a really nice effect. I'll just get in a bit closer. Yeah, it does look quite good. And then what we can do then is we can just refine it a little bit with our blade or we can get a little bit of tape in there. Sorry, um, sandpaper, just to help reinforce that line a little bit. The thing is, we don't wanna go crazy. You know, this is not a super detailed model, but at the same time, there still needs to be some degree of, uh, you know, detail being observed here. So. You know, we're not trying to win Golden Demon. We're just trying to present a, a reasonably faithful uh, diorama is what we're trying to do. So I'm just going to carry on doing that to all the steps. Um, I'll include a couple of photos so you can see what I'm doing. But again, another time lapse, I'm afraid. It's just, uh, it just takes its time. Okay, so I, I had a, I got a quite a nice uniformed um, cut into the face of each step with that little hacksaw there. But now I'm just going back in with the with the scalpel and just creating a bit more of uh, just more more of a, a, a deeper V in there, just to make sure that we reinforce the fact that they are uh, they are separate and you know they've seen wear and tear over the years. So um it's a bit boring but it definitely looks a lot better now i was a bit worried um i was really pleased with the with the progress up until now and i was like oh no it's just not looking good but you know what i'm actually really pleased with it so i'm just going to continue doing this i'm nearly finished now and then we'll get on to the next stage All right, a really good sand there. I kind of just knocked off the perfect, you know, half circle, half round of those uh, of those fronts, and uh, they feel a little bit uneven and they feel a little bit messed up, and it's really nice. It's really helped bring out that uh, those little chips in each of the joins that I've done. So really pleased with that. And then obviously just give the whole thing a bit of a sand. So it looks really nice now, really pleased with it. Okay. After a lot of fiddling and fettling, 
I think I'm finally happy with the staircase. Do I think it's perfect? No, it's not. Definitely not perfect. And uh, I'm really happy with it though. I really am. So the next step now is to kind of mark out where I want some debris to go. Now, normally when I build a board, I would just, you know, sprinkle it on, spray it back and work out what I want. But I don't really have that luxury this time because I am going to glue it all down. So first thing I know is I need to fix some of these steps because they're not quite right. So if you look at the top down here, there's a, a part there which, which is obviously not quite right. So I'm going to have to cover somehow this section here. But before I do that, let me just measure, make sure I've got the right part. Ah, now there you go. It's this bit I need to uh, I need to cover. So what I've actually done is I've reinforced the wrong piece. So, you know, that happens, that's absolutely fine. So all I'll do, I'll just go back over this uh, of my method. Don't always get it right, guys, you know? It's just something that happens. But it's okay. It's all fixable. There we go. So we just, we just cut the front out of that little step. Then we cut a bit of a V in it. There we go. There we go. Good stuff. All right, that's fixed. So uh, again, I'm just going to mark this out on the pen and I'll probably do something along here. Might do like a big chunk and then uh, put some debris around it. So that needs fixing. Um, there's also another one here that needs fixing, uh, which is this one here. So that's okay. We'll fix it in a similar way. And there's one here. Yeah, so this bit here needs fixing as well. You know, you could fill this with green stuff, milliper, whatever thing you want, and then sand it flat. But I know I don't have loads of experience with that. And I know if I try to fill it and sand it, I just don't think it will look the same. So I think it's better to, um, to try and fix it this way. It's like painting, you know, if you mess up your airbrushing in one particular spot, instead of having to repaint the whole thing, you can just make it into battle damage, uh, which really helps. Uh, there's a couple of pieces here now that need fixing. So this one here, that needs sorting. And I'm just trying to plan a little bit more because I, I, I'm not very good at planning. We, we already know this. So uh, I'm just trying to plan my... Uh, what I'm trying to do, because I'll end up missing it and then I'll have to go back and get the glue out again and mess around and uh, it's, it's just not good. It's just waste so much time. But we'll get it. Don't worry. Okay, so that's pretty much my major problem areas that I need to solve. Other than that, I'm quite happy with it. Oh, there is one tiny hole there where I didn't push the, uh, the ends up together. But that's okay because it's really close to the actual structure itself. So we can do some sort of damage here and maybe we can just get it to bleed down onto this section here. I mean, ultimately the marks don't matter, but if I can rough some sort of form out, then that's really good. Cool. Okay. Really happy. I am... Oh. Don't want to get ahead of myself. There is a massive one there, so we need to sort that out. Now, I might find something to fill this. I'm looking at getting a 3D printed part like um, some vents. So like you do on the on the pavement, you get like manhole covers and or you know gas covers or whatever. I'm trying to look at something I can adapt from a 3D print I've got. Uh, so it's like um, oval kind of vents with a bit of a hood on it. If that's the case, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it here. So uh, I'll still mark it out because if I don't manage to sort it, um, then I'll just fill it with something or other. I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll do some damage or something with it. 
So I'm trying to get that sorted at the moment. So we'll see what happens with that. But that's it for now. Uh, I am going to come back to you once I've uh, I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up, a bit of a clean up, and then we'll come back and do the next part. The next thing I wanted to do, I wanted to add a little bit of detail in here to cover up the kind of that extra score line, which uh, or that join line. So all I've, all I've done, I've used this kind of, uh, it's a bridge section from the Grimdark Terrain 8 mil series, but it looks really good, like it could be like a grate or a cover. So all I did was I cut out uh, a hole uh, from the plastic card, just to scored it, uh, marked it with a pencil, a uh, pen rather, then scored it, and then just pushed it into the corners. I, I snapped it in half and then just got the clippers on it and just sort of made a bit of a hole. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll PVA glue that in place uh, and then we'll just put a little bit of debris and rubble in there to make sure it looked like it's uh, just fallen on it and it's just shattered the metal and you know bits have gone down. So a nice little extra detail and I'll paint it copper probably as well and get a bit of um, you know, get a bit of verdigris in there and stuff and see how that's corroded up a little bit. So just a nice little extra feature in there. I'm not going to go over the top with the detail because this was supposed to be quite a simple diorama and it's already taken quite a long time and got quite complicated. So for me anyway, for some of you guys, this just might be child's play. But for me, you know, this is the first big step. Um, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some sand, just some regular sand from the beach in a few areas where I really want to start building up the, the rubble and the rock. And sand is a really good foundation because it creates a really good textured surface for the bigger rock particles to stick to. So I'm just going to use PVA glue and some sand and just liberally sprinkle it in the areas that I need in these areas that I've marked on top of this grill here and uh, at the back here behind the building. So uh, I'll get on with that and I'll come back to you. All right, plenty of PVA glue on there. I might, uh, if I'm honest, rub some of it off. It's, uh, I can't really tell what it's going to look like. I know roughly where it's going to go, of course, but um, I could have always put some grey or black paint or a coloured paint in here, but um, I think it'll be all right. Cool. All right, and then, again, sand from the beach. It's going to give it sort of 20 minutes to dry. And then I'll hoover this up with my little hoover. Lovely. Cool. Let's cover up. It's good to just put loads more on and then, you know, I, I don't want to tell you how to put PVA, I don't want to tell you how to put sand on PVA, but, you know, just give it plenty of time to set, 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and have a look at, uh, at where we are. It's been 20 minutes, so uh, let's uh, have a quick look. I'm just going to get rid of the sand over here, and I can just brush it to one side. We'll clean that up a little bit later on. All right, so that's made a... A really good start. You can probably see on the top down there uh, about what we're looking at. So quite happy. Yeah, real nice. Okay, next step. I've got these really big chunks of slate. Other pasta brands are available. Uh, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a bit out here. And all I've done, I bought some slate from an, uh, from a pet shop smashed it with a hammer, uh, and then I washed it, and then I filtered it through a plastic container with various size holes, so 5 mil, 10 mil, 15 mil holes, and that gives me sort of different grades of, of uh, aggregate here or, or slate, and then you can have a look on this one here. You can definitely see the difference between the two piles. So we'll put the bigger stuff on first, and then the finer stuff later, uh, but exactly the same method, ton of PVA glue, but we're gonna try and be a little bit more selective here. So, you know, this hole, we might put a bit of rubble right in the middle or just off to the side, but uh, yeah, we'll just try and dress this a little bit. And then if there's a little bit of exposed, excuse me, exposed PVA glue, I'm just gonna fill it uh, with this stuff and a little bit of sand. So uh, we'll get on with that.
It looks real good. And do you remember what I said uh, in the first video? I said I'm gonna make this bit of a hybrid board. So I am still gonna glue some of the rocks down and kind of make them a bit more permanent. But then I'm also gonna uh, scatter some sand on a little bit later. And uh, in New Zealand, there's a lot of black sand beaches as well, uh, which are really cool, kind of volcanic sort of uh, beaches. And um, uh, they produce black sand, which is pretty cool. It's got a lot of iron in it. Um, and uh, I will, uh, hopefully, if there's a, a black sand beach near me, I will go and grab a load of black sand and I will add that as kind of like the final flourish right at the very end, because um, it does look really cool. All right, that'll do for now. I need to give it a couple of hours to really cure, let that PVA dry. Uh, and then we can come shake the rest of it off. It's had some time to dry now, and I'm really happy with the way it's taking shape. Um, I was able to build these mounds up by putting some watered down PVA glue onto the area, which soaks through and then uh, holds the whole thing together. So I was able to create these kind of um, big mounds of stuff really, really easily. So I'm gonna kind of reinforce these areas a little bit more and do the backside of the diorama a bit because uh, they're not they're not quite as as um, moundy as I want, so <laughs> that's a good technical word. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix some of this stuff up now. I'm pretty sure you can buy this stuff uh, from from sort of any sort of hobby store. It's specifically for sort of fixing this stuff in place. But as I said, I can't really get to a hobby store at the moment, so I just mix some PVA glue of water. And uh, in regards to consistency, I just need it to be able to be sucked up by this little pipette. Um, and then for me, that's the right consistency, which I think is pretty much there. So it wasn't, a, well, probably a little bit more, a bit watery. You know, it's that classic consistency of milk that you're looking for, I guess. Even looks like it. Yeah, look at that. All right, lovely. So again, I'm just gonna add some big chunks uh, with some uh, neat PVA glue, and then I shall add the sand on top. I'll build it up like I would do when I do a normal board build, and then I'll fix it in place with this stuff here. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and get a bit of debris all along the front of the steps here. Not not all along it, but on, on certain places. So I think the best way of doing that is to just kind of, just pop it up on its end. And I'm just gonna, just gonna coat the, uh, the underside of these steps, because that's where it would collect, you know? I don't wanna go overboard. I'm just going to use the finer stuff here. Yeah, and that looks really good to me. Now, um, a lot of this isn't fixed in, which is fine. So we're going to go back in with our uh, dropper. I'm just trying to break all the air bubbles that are in there. And there it is. I think I'm happy with the way it is right now. I don't want to go too crazy with the, with the rock and the rubble. Um, and I think when we come to paint it 
and then we'll put that final layer of black sand over the top of it. I think it'll be absolutely fine. It's been 24 hours. The glue hasn't quite set, but I'm gonna paint this in a couple of days time. So there is plenty of time for that glue to thoroughly dry. So you can see here from the top down camera, you can just see the, the extra bits that I've glued on to make the road. There is a bit of a seam down the front of the road, but um, I think I'm okay with that, you know? I think uh, we might do like a white line down it or something, or, or something similar. Uh, the only thing I did off camera, uh, and you can see in the photo there, there were some dots uh, where the uh, nails were, uh, were holding the building together in, in a sort of 90 degree bend sort of thing. Um, and all I did is I just mixed up some green stuff, uh, made it quite hot in my hand, so it was really pliable. Um, used a load of water to stop it sticking to my fingers, and then I just pushed it into those holes and that long seam where the column meets the side of the building there, uh, and I pushed it in with a, with a Stanley blade. Um, and then I left it to dry and then I gave it a really quick sand. So that has seamlessly plugged those holes up. So when I come to paint it, you won't see them. That is it. I'm really happy with how this has come together. I'm really excited to get it painted and then to finally put on that uh, transport and those Thalax. So uh, thank you so much for watching and for sticking with me. And I will see you in part three.